Um, iPhone 5C um, touch connector replacement. Okay, it looks like we'll have to probably get this battery out first. It's obstructing the removal. Uh, what have we got there? Battery from 2014. Uh, no great surprises, that's almost running out. Okay, we don't need that anymore. We can remove these screws to a safe place, along with the chassis. Fortunately, we don't have to remove any shields. So that's hopefully fairly straightforward. Let's go to the microscope. Alright, let's get some flux down. And let's get this connector off. Starting to see some pins pick up their sheen. Nearly there. Those end ones are voluntarily good. If you don't want to force this off, just want to bring it when it comes. There we go. There's one very busted up connector. Okay, it's not that bad, but it's not great either. Okay. Let's put down some leaded. All good. Let's brush that off and check see how it looks. Yeah, that's looking pretty clean and nice. Now, now the fun bit, finally replacing connector. The real trick here with getting the connectors off is making sure you don't melt them. It's fine if you don't need them again. But if you're doing a transplant, then uh, you don't really want to damage them. Here we go again. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of a breeze coming in from the side, which is making things a little bit harder. Then again, it's been a disgustingly hot day today, so I'm willing to accept the breeze. Okay, you can see the pin starting to gloss up. Keep losing that gloss once the breeze hits. There we go. Very gently. Give it a chance to cool down before we grab it too much. We don't really want to. Um, <coughs> we don't really want to 
dented or oh that is very hot the right thing to do would be to have these connectors in stock that'd be expecting too much It was actually from a 5S and this is for a 5C that we're repairing, but it doesn't really matter because the 5S and the 5C sh share the same connectors on this particular case. Now we already put solder down, so we're kind of hoping that we can just uh, reheat it and have it naturally sit down. Doesn't always work, but it's worth a shot. Otherwise what we have to do is we have to individually solder down the pins which while it's entirely doable it's a bit of a nuisance and you, more often than not you tend to make a small mistake and it ruins the whole connector. Once again, this end's been a little bit tricky. Okay, I think we're good. I just had to nudge a little bit there to break the surface tension that was building up under here. Okay, I think we're good. No, we're not. See that? All that's basically happened is we've anchored down. <laughs> All we did is anchored down the top where we didn't get the bottom. Now it's a bit tricky because if the plastic is hot and you push down like that, you just end up um, denting it all. So all we end up doing was collecting those down there. Okay, looks like we'll have to do that again. I don't really want to have to press down on that. Just add a little bit of solder on the tip of the line. Not a lot. Um, that's quite a lot. <laughs> Just want a little bit so that it can feed in if required. You know, I've got to be real careful there. Getting a bit close to touching the gold contact. Alright, after doing that, we're going to test each one to make sure it doesn't move. It's a bit of a tedious process, but it's less tedious than 
putting it all back together and then finding out that you left a pin adrift a little bit of a bend in there not happy about that but did you move or you just kind of not happy about that pin either I mean it's not going to go anywhere but it's a Alright, let's wash this off, see how we go. Get all that flux out of there. I think a lot of the curvature on the connectors tends to come about when you're doing the removal transplant process yeah I'm really not happy with that pin sorry I hope I don't mess this up It's not taking it. What are you, a ground plane pin? Probably is. <sighs> Sometimes like this, you need a bit of hot air to help. Not a lot. It just sort of gives you that little bit of extra power without making the iron. There we go, see? Much better. It helps because it soaks the ground plane with heat far better than what the iron itself can deliver. And yeah, that is a ground plane pin. You can see that now that it's wet. Alright. Okay, now we test to see if this works. Initially, since we're merely checking to see if the um, touch works we don't really have to we're not going to bother with plugging everything in so plug what we need and we'll come back to the rest okay, probably didn't even have to plug that in uh, the battery is no good speaking of which we need to remove these strips these are Tessa red tape strips and while they're very strong I do tend to dislike them in batteries because they're too strong if you need to remove the battery you find yourself damaging it um, I generally prefer to just have um, that 3M tape which is certainly not as strong but it does it um, does let you release it easier okay we're just getting this touch connector back in it's actually I should check to see that it doesn't appear to have any damage that we can see I was thinking maybe it might have pulled that pin out originally but it doesn't look like that's the case okay it's a bit of a snug fit The snugness will be probably because it was um, slightly bowed up and when I manually push those pins down it causes it to tighten up a bit on the outside. Okay, looks like we don't have a charge here. We have a battery power or we just Just looks like we need charging. Let's go into emergency. Let's see how we go. Well, looks like that's all working good. Excellent.